Okay. Right yeah. Now we're going to get into solving polynomial equations. Um, if you've got just a regular equation, you got to get the x by itself. So you just undo it. You subtract 1, and then divide by 2, and you get x equals 5. Now, when we're doing these polynomials, we're mostly going to be just doing the quadratics, which, if you remember from the last chapter, if you graph the quadratic, remember, how can you tell the answers to it just by looking at the graph? Where they cross, right there and there are the two answers. So it's possible to have two answers, one answer, if it just touches once, or you can have no solutions. It may be like that, or it may be like this, where they don't intersect at all. Now, this first stuff is already set up for you. It's just you get an idea of how to solve them. Um, and you need to know the zero product property, which you already know. You just probably don't know what's called that. If you multiply x times y, and the answer is zero, what do you know about? There's no, no there's a solution. One of, zero, zero. One of them has to be a zero. Either x has to be zero, or y has to be zero. So in the polynomials, they're going to be like this. I showed you this once a few days ago. You have zero times zero, zero. So the same thing as this counts as one term because it's in parentheses, and this counts as one. So when you multiply these two together, since they end up equaling zero, that means either this is zero or that's zero, right? Yeah. So the way you figure that out is, to make this into zero, what would x have to be? Negative, Negative two. Negative two. To make this into zero, and there's your two solutions. So what this means now, yeah, it is easy. This is a quadratic right here, it's just factored. If we multiplied this out, if we actually multiplied it, that would be x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. You can combine that. So there, we unfactored it. And we've already solved these using the quadratic formula on the last chapter. When we graph this, it crosses at negative 2 and positive 3 when we graphed it. That's why the solutions are negative 2 and positive 3. Okay? So, eventually, what you're going to be doing, which is going to take a while, usually the factoring is the toughest part of algebra, is you're going to be given the actual quadratic, and you've got to put it into that form to figure out what these got to be. But for now, they're going to give you the factored form already. So all you need to do is realize, in this, since this times this equals 0, either this is 0 or that's 0. So what would you plug in for x to make this 0? Negative 17. 17. And then what would you plug in here? 12. Okay? So they're just, again, these are real easy problems. It's just getting you used to the idea of how to spot the uh, solution. If it's a uh, squared, x minus 9 squared means x minus 9 times x minus 9 equals zero. What would you put in there to make it zero? Nine, what would you put in there? Nine. So it's the same thing. So there's only one solution. What that's called though actually is a double root. Double whammy. 
Remember, root means solution. And if you get the same answer for both of them, it's just a double root. They call it dr like that. Now, all that means is the quadratic is just going to touch at 9. If you graph this, it would be like that. The only place it touches is there. Okay, you guys, put the iPads away. Now, here there's three things multiplied together to equal zero, which means this is zero, this is zero, or this is zero. This is the easy one just to look at and see. What would you put in there? Negative five. So that's one of the answers. How about this one? You're close. Positive one half. All you got to do is if you can't look at it and see like this, we know then 2x minus 1, set it equal to 0 because we're trying to figure out what would make it 0, and then just solve it. Add 1, divide by 2. So x equals 1 half. So that's the second solution. Then this one, another one that's not so easy just to look at. Zero. So just set it equal to zero and solve it. Subtract three, divide by seven, and you get negative three sevenths. Okay. So here x plus 1 squared just means it's x plus 1 times x plus 1. So what are you going to put in there? x squared. To make it equal to 0? Negative 1. Those will just have one solution, but technically it's called a double root. We don't need to worry about that yet. Here, we can look right there and see that x is negative 2, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. These we might have to figure out. So just take 3x minus 7, set it equal to 0. So add 7, divide by 3. And if it's an oddball like that, just leave it. Just leave it an improper fraction. So this one, we do the same thing. Set it equal to 0 to figure out what x would be. Subtract 9. Divide by 4, and there you got it, negative 9 fourths. So you're going to get some odd fractions if these have odd numbers in them. Okay? So that's all it is today. These are all going to be set up for you. You just got to list what the solutions are.